Maverick Traders. Welcome out to your market roundup. It's September 16th. Corey here with you. Let's jump in. We're going to take a look at meaningful news. We're going to look at sector rotation and really get ready for the Fed meeting, which comes out on Wednesday. And with that Fed meeting coming up, we've got some bullish ideas. We've got some bearish ideas really going with the relative strength, relative weakness of today's market environment. Disclaimer. This video was created for professional stock and option traders. Maverick Trading is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70 to 80% of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's break down what happened today. So today was a little bit of a pause, I would say, in major markets. You can see from the returns, Dow up about half a percent, S&P flat, NASDAQ down about half a percent, Russell up about half. Oil was the big outperformer, up a couple of percent, gold flat, but a little bit of a pause. I mean, tomorrow there's, there's retail sales out in the morning that can create some volatility, but all eyes are certainly focused on the Fed and that coming rate cutting cycle. And so as the Fed meeting approaches, bonds are a story in and of itself because they're already pricing this in. And you have to understand how rate cutting or rate hiking cycles work. They go for multiple months. So the fact that the Fed is embarking on a rate cutting cycle, look, we don't need to price in one cut of 25 or, ba or 50 basis points. The reality is, is that in the coming months, in the next year or so, they're probably going to cut all the way from 5.5 down into the threes, but certainly into the fours for sure. So it's one after another, not every single meeting, but there's more and more cuts coming. And so the bond market is rallying, rates are already declining in the face of that. Advanced decline line, about 60% of stocks up today. And the 50 day moving average is certainly more bullish with about two thirds of stocks trending higher. So if you look at the S&P, big recovery and the day, most days are not that important, but there are certain days that stand out and everyone should have known that this was a day that something changed in the markets. Now, you don't even need a reason why. It doesn't have to be some major news event. You can see it in the chart. This day, was important. Why? We started the day here. We sold off and pivoted lower, making a lower low than the prior day's low. At that point, intraday, the markets looked bearish. They looked terrible. By the end of the day, those bears, this is called a bear trap, those bears were in a world of pain. The markets rallied all the way back, not just to positive, back above the 50 MA, back well above those highs. I mean, this candlestick, first of all, is gigantic in size. The intraday move was historic in a way. And it's one group just absolutely got slapped in the face. The bears were trapped. They're in a world of hurt. And the likelihood is, it's like a, a sharp gap or a big reversal. Sometimes there's a big smack in the face and the group that takes control, they're going to have control where there's smoke, there's fire for at least another few days in a row. I mean, at least a while. And so this was the day that really turned things. And again, it's it doesn't have to be a news story. It doesn't have to be something where, uh, you know, they cured cancer or anything like that. It's just this was a day where you could see the buyer stepped in aggressively and the sellers were in a world of pain. I would compare that type of reversal to some of these gaps. When you see a big gap, that's a problem where any bullish traders are trapped up here in a bad position. The bears have control and you can see the follow through. Here's a gap down and the follow through. Here's a gap down and the follow through. Sometimes you get gaps up. Here's a gap up and the follow through. This type of reversal has that type of momentum behind it. And it brings us all the way back up towards the highs as we go into the Fed meeting. So 
level resistance. I think you can draw a trend line underneath the lows and say we're in something of an ascending triangle type of pattern. Do we break down? Do we break out? Odds favor to the upside, right? The bulls have control. The NASDAQ, much more sideways. I mean, literally 20 and 50 are stacked on top of each other. Down a little bit today, still not at new highs, but making higher lows. So this is a symmetrical triangle, a volatility compression. Do we break higher? Do we go back towards the bottom end of the range? Well, I think this week will determine which way we go, and odds seem to favor the upside. If we dig a little deeper, the equal weight S&P has already broken out. So those things that are more value oriented and less on the technical or the technology side of the market already starting to break out a bit. So again, this maintained an uptrend, still had the big reversal day, but that's just capital coming back in. If you wanted to buy something on that big reversal, buying the equal weight or buying not large cap tech, but these other types of names is what this is telling you. That was the much better setup. And it continues to be the area of strength. So I would look outside of the technology sector for upside trades. Um, clearly, there's more outperformance in other things, not the technology sector. And today's a good example of that. I mean, market's doing just fine. 60% of stocks up. Apple, Broadcom, and NVIDIA sharply in the red most of the other stocks more in the green. So one could argue the, the markets did a lot better today than it looks. It was weighed down by those large cap tech stocks and that's why the S&P was basically flat. So overall, still in more of an upward trend and that reversal a few days ago was key to really getting a stronger sense of where the market's going to go and realizing that even though I, I was leaning, thinking, oh, there's more chance we go down than up, you've got to pay attention to those big days. Most days are, you know, today was kind of a ho-hum day. There's not too much information in today's candle or today's price action or anything, but Every once in a while, you get one of those days, and you always have to ask yourself, was today a critical day? Most of the time, the answer is no. Every once in a while, you'll answer that with a resounding yes, and that was one of them. So let's look at some bulls. Let's look at some bears together. Um, in the categories, I would say commodities are weaker. Large cap tech, not necessarily all of tech, but large cap tech, a bit weaker. I mean, the apples of the world, they don't look as good as a lot of other things. So a couple of examples of bulls. Here's eBay. Now, this is a consumer stock. Uh, this is in the consumer discretionary space. And eBay is performing. I mean, it has broken out to the upside. It continues to see follow through. They're buying eBay and they're buying it aggressively and eBay's buying back its own shares and that stock is just, it's over, it's gone into overdrive is what I like to call it. It is in overdrive mode, overdrive mode and has that upward bullish breakout momentum. Um, also on the upside, Zillow. Recent breakout here, upside push, upside momentum breakout. When these things start motoring, they have a tendency to just go a little higher the next day and a little higher the next day. So these are just sort of go with the flow, ride the trend, continue to bet on higher prices. On the flip side, you see that commodity space is just more bearish. Here's CNQ, recent bearish breakdown. If we get a small bounce, I would look to short it as a general rule. And then Oxy. I mean, if there's a stock that it's the only one that pops up in the bearish overdrive, the strong, strong downward trend that has that much pressure to be below a 30 on the RSI, which tends to lead to further and further selling. Oxy down here at 51 and looks like it's on the cusp of going down into the 40s per share in the coming weeks ahead. So you've got some bulls, you've got some bears. I think the best bearish candidates 
seem to be more in that commodity space right now. Retail sales come out tomorrow morning. This is the final economic report prior to the Fed meeting. So I'd expect a bit of a gap on the retail sales. Uh, markets will probably make too much of the number and think that that sways the Fed one way or the other between 25 and 50 basis points. But uh, watch the retail sales tomorrow. And then the Fed meeting out on Wednesday. Again, they're going to cut. It's a question of how much. And there's more rate cuts coming. That's how these cycles work. On the earnings front, we've got Darden, we've got FedEx, General Mills, Lennar, so a few companies reporting, but we're mostly outside of earnings season right now. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great week ahead. We'll see you next time.